Christ living under divine right. You need a strong east wind. You need a strong east wind to blow out your preconceived ideas. You need a strong east wind to blow out your religion. You need a strong east wind to blow out the doctrine of the scribes and Pharisees, which still possess your soul because you've not allowed the Holy Ghost to move in you and set you free. A ministry with a vision. A ministry on the move. A ministry established by our faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Think what God wants to do in his people is make his supernatural Holy Ghost fire and power clear to our sight, clear to our mind, so that there is no doubt in our spiritual creation who God is. I'm a for Christ Love International Ministry. A ministry of the vision built on a plan. God. Hallelujah. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Revival for Christ Club International Ministries on Sunday afternoon. I am glad to be in the house of the Lord, in the presence of God, ready to give him all the glory and praise. I hope you came ready to shout and to praise his holy name. He's worthy to be praised this morning. Let's all come together, stand up, and pray and get ready for service. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh, we are thankful to you, God. We give you praise and glory this day, God. Father, we thank you that we can step into this place and worship you in spirit and in truth. God, I pray that the power, your Holy Ghost, will have its way today. Father, we yield ourselves to you and we ask your hand to move today in a powerful way. God, hear our praise to you, our worship to you. Let it move your heart today. God, we thank you. We praise you and we give you all the glory and praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Just begin to lift up your hands and begin to worship the Lord. He's worthy to be praised. Set your mind upon him. Oh, we want that fire to consume us. There is nothing like the fire of God that consumes every bit of our flesh. Oh, just begin to lift up your hands and step into that place. That place where your heart opens up to the Lord. Where he can touch you. Where he can prepare you. Even for what he's going to speak today. Oh, Father, we thank you and we praise your holy name. Father, let your spirit move. Hallelujah.
burning inside of me. Oh, breath of heaven, breathing life in me. Oh, oh, oh yes, begin to praise His name. He's worthy. He is the life in you. You are the life. Just to 
changing We're wasting breath debating This life is fading, fading Somebody wake up, there's a world that's waiting Tick tock, times are changing We're wasting breath debating This life is fading, fading Somebody wake up, there's a world that's waiting Tick tock The winds of fire, right? I got it right. The winds of fire. Amen. Well, that was powerful. Praise the Lord. Amen. Are y'all excited to be here today? Amen. Our apostles are out on a uh, ministry operation, so praise the Lord. Keep them in prayer. I don't know why Chief Apostle was preaching today, and I don't know if he's about done or if he's still going, but... We need to lift him up in prayer as he keeps on pouring out. They both are out there pouring out to souls and touching other uh, ministries. So we need to thank the Lord for that. Amen. Because as they go out and we support them, as long as we're home and we're doing what we're supposed to be doing and supporting them and lifting them up, you know, we have a part, God, because we're a part of the body of Christ. Amen. So I'm excited every time they get an opportunity to go out and do something for the kingdom of God and touch other people's life. I know it meant everything to me when I was on the other side, when I was the one that they came and ministered to. So I always pray that God would put them in the place where people that are really hungry and searching, that God would use them in a mighty way to minister to those souls. All right, well, if everyone would like to stand up to their feet, we're going to go ahead and get into the uh, word today. We're going to bring up uh, the vessel that God has selected today to speak the word of God and I want you to pay attention I don't I want us to give all of our attention because one thing we know about this every time a person stands behind this pulpit do you know that your apostles pray to make sure they're putting the person that needs to be back here to deliver what God has for you so because of that we need to respect our apostles and give attention to the one that is bringing forth the word. So I'm going to go, I'm going to move out of the way. We're going to bring up the minister today. And I just, I'm so thankful for this vessel. I am excited to hear what God has spoken to her. Please welcome uh, minister, I almost said MIT, no longer, minister Karen Redwine. Hallelujah. Who's happy to be in the house of the Lord? Woo! I was happy when they said, let us come into the house of the Lord. Every single time that we walk into this place, you can feel the anointing and the presence of God. It radiates from the top to the bottom around the walls. You are a blessed people to be called in this time, in this hour, in this day. Praise God. Don't ever forget how much God loves you and where God brought you to and what God has called you to do. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm just excited for what God has today. I don't know where everything is going to go. We're going to follow the spirit of the Lord. Amen. All right. Let's go before the Lord in a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we yield ourselves to you today, God. Lord, I believe, God, that you have a message for your people, God, to move forward in this day and this hour, God. Lord, and I pray, God, that there would be waves of your wind that would blow through this place today, God. Lord, that there would not be one person that is not shaken from the top of their head to the sole of their feet, God. Let this be a day that they remember everything changed. And they started moving forward in you, God. Father, we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And of course we know, and I know, 
that I wouldn't even be here. This would not even be possible to have this opportunity without the visionary of Revival for Christ Club. You know, it was funny. I was thinking the other day, I was, oh, I was 15 years old, and I remember sitting in this little church, and I loved God. And every time they'd have an altar call, I'd just run to the altar. I'd start crying, and then I'd get saved. I don't know how many times I got saved. So many times. And I would stay there and just cry out to God. I loved God so much. But I always thought there had to be more. I wanted more. I wanted to do more. And they didn't want to do anything for Jesus. But I'm telling you, there was a person that God sent in that moment in time. And they sent him to this little church. Because God saw a flicker in me. He saw a hunger in me if I was the only one. And they sat in there. And I had to sit in a nursery because I had a child. Very young. And... As they sat in there, they started talking to me about Revival for Christ. They started talking to me about the vision. And at that time, we had 37 ministry operations. They were going to nursing home, street team, prison ministry. I mean, we were all over the place doing everything we could for, or they, at that moment, them, for the Lord. And I kept thinking, that's what I've been looking for. I've, I didn't even know anything like that existed. And I remember uh, that was a Sunday. And they, back then, they had church on Tuesdays and Thursdays also. And so I come, me and a friend, on that Tuesday. And I, I remember walking through the doors. And you got to remember at this time, I know y'all see who I am right now, but you didn't know me back then. I was just a messed up little girl. I had been abused my whole life. I mean, I, I can't even believe that God sent somebody to come get me. And I remember when I walked through the doors, I think, actually, if I'm remembering right, uh, Apostle Jenny was the first one to greet me, and she wrapped her arms around me. I didn't know her from Adam, but I felt a pure love. And in that time, they maybe had 25 people over on Classen that was in that church at that time, if that. And so everybody was loving on me, talking to me. Like, I just felt like I forgot where I was. Like, I was just so lost in the love that was there. And I remember when they started praise, I was like, I, I, I grew up in a little Baptist church. I wouldn't say grew up. I, everywhere we moved, like every six months, I would find a bus, somebody to come pick me up and take me to church, just me. And I had two brothers and family. Anyways, I remember when praise was going on, I didn't understand it because I didn't know what Holy Ghost was. I didn't know what Pentecost was. I didn't know anything. All I knew was just a few little hymns, a little service, and a little altar call. So I'm sitting like, as, I'm, I'm up against the wall. Like I'm literally like a wallflower. And I'm shaking, but I could not deny the power thereof. And I could not deny what was happening in that place. There was such a sincerity. But then all of a sudden it switched to the Word of God. And I remember sitting in my seat thinking, I've never understood the Word of God like this. There was like a crystal clarity. And I remember just like supping it all in. Like I couldn't even write. I was just like, my eyes were fixed upon the vessel. And so we went through the Word and all of a sudden it switched to ministry. And at that time I didn't know what that was. But it switched to ministry. And then all of a sudden people just started lifting up their hands. And I was just sitting in the chair like I was really nervous. And all of a sudden, this person come out, and they started prophesying and ministering to people. People are flipping chairs, man, going all over the place. And I, but I did not move out of my chair. The person that I was with was way in the back, ready to go by the door. But I couldn't. And I was sitting in the chair, and I just felt, I didn't know at the time, I felt the presence of God just fall upon me. And I remember them saying, just praise him. Just praise him. And in my head, I thought, I don't know how to praise him. And all of a sudden, I closed my eyes, and I just said, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. And I was filled with the Holy Ghost. No man ever touched me, but the Spirit of God fell upon me and baptized me with the Holy Ghost and fire. And I thank God that somebody took the time to come to that little church where I was nothing. And God brought me here. And see, I'm telling you, we got to get ready for what God's about to do. See, there's flickers of flames all over this country. And God is sending it out through the airways. He's sending it out through revival. He's sending it out by churches that are about to come up in this ministry. You need to prepare yourself. It's not just sometimes we look at a moment that's right now. But this moment leads to bigger moments. And God is wanting to prepare us. 
And I know that our apostles have been talking about self-examination. And I'm telling you, when God brought me to this message, it shook me. And so I'm praying that you get shaken tonight. Amen? And I, I could barely stand when they started singing the Valley of Dry Bones song because that's what my message is all about. Thank you, Jesus. All right, let's go ahead and get ready. Let's go into Ezekiel 37. Hallelujah. We're going to Ezekiel 37, and we're going to start in verse 1. And it says, The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley that was full of dry bones. And it says, When the hand of the Lord is upon me, and right here in this place, we've been taught by our apostles, the hand of God, the word, the spirit, the power, the authority, and the anointing, when it's upon you, are you acting in it? When it's upon you, is there action that's taking place? All right, so he says, when you're walking in the five elements throughout the day. And I'm going to keep this through the day. So many times we want to make it a Sunday, a Wednesday, when we're having a hard time. And God said, no, it is throughout the day on a daily basis that God wants you to start examining. Now, the name of my message is called A Body That Sizzles. And the reason that, I, that God called it this Sizzle means very hot, burning with a hissing sound. Whenever you start to sizzle, and I'm going to give you a little example here. Okay, let's, I'll be like JJ, I'm going to use this morning. We're out looking for our apostle's precious dog. And our hearts were moved for her because of what she and apostle, chief apostle have done in our life, the sacrifices that they've made, the life that they have laid down to see us be everything that God called us to be. And all of a sudden, I'm in my room, and I hear the alarm go off, or I hear a, a sound on my phone. And I'm like, and all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, my gosh, it's like almost 4 in the morning. What is that? So I look over, and I see Apostle Jenny said that boss is out, that he's missing. And my heart just fell because I know how much she loves him. And I know her heart must be breaking. And so I'm sitting in my room and I'm like, I don't have my message together. I don't have things ready. The Lord told me to go to bed last night. Don't worry about it, which was really hard for me. But he knew that I would be up at four in the morning when I didn't. Okay. So all of a sudden we get that. You could have just turned back over. You could have fizzled. I'm going to give you fizzle. To make weak, feeble, to fail or end after a promising start. See, that's where we get sometimes. We start off good in the spirit. We start off good in the things and the plans that God has for us. But all of a sudden, we get sizzled a little bit. Have you ever been sizzled or get like electric hits you and you're like, whoo. It makes you weak for a minute. But then you press. See, there are times that we could have been like, we're all tired. It's four in the morning. Who's not tired at four in the morning? But our heart burned. Our heart burned to help. So you know what? Sizzle me, Lord. Sizzle me, Lord. And so as, as we get over there and we're looking and we're looking and we can't find him, all of a sudden we get a little bit of hope. And me and Jeffy, Jeffy's like, there he is. And so we start following him and we go down the street and he runs in the back and he goes in the field. Like Jeffy jumps out and starts chasing him. I'm just like, oh my gosh, how are we going to find him? Okay, so this is like 30 minutes within our journey. So then, all of a sudden, JJ and uh, Mario are like, no, we found him. We're with him. We're chasing him, too. So it's kind of exciting. Like, we're just getting so excited. Like, we're, man, we're pumped. I can sizzle all day like this. Mm -hmm. All right. So then, we lose him completely. Can't find him. Not much longer, Kayla calls, and she's like, uh, hey, he's jumping fences. We saw him jump over a fence, and I'm thinking, we're never going to find this dog. Then all of a sudden, Apostle Jenny texts. She goes, we will find him this morning. And I heard it say, listen to the voice of the apostles. In myself, I'm like, we're in neighborhoods all over the place. How are we going to find boss? Like, it didn't make no sense. Listen to the voice of the apostle. For over an hour and a half, there was no sighting. There was no sign except for people getting tired, pressing, waiting, wondering. We're all over the place. We scoured that whole entire area for like three hours. 
and we could have stopped sizzling. Voices could have come in our ear. Oh, God, I'm not going to get much sleep before I have to go. Me. There was a moment in the, in, when it stopped, and we were waiting for an hour and a half, like there's nothing happening. And there was a moment there I was like, maybe I can just kind of work on my message. And then I heard the Spirit say, you're on an assignment right now. Don't waste the oil. And I was like, yes, Lord. And I never thought about it again. I didn't even care. I'll walk on faith. God, I'll, I'll get up there if you don't give me nothing. And then all of a sudden, my car started making noise. Then all of a sudden, somebody calls me, and they're like, hey, Karen, are you the car without a light in the back? I, I mean, somebody gave me a car. My car broke down. Anyways, I don't know. It's the first time I drove this car when it was dark. So I'm like, I don't know. So I get out of my car, and I go to the back, and I'm like, yep, that's me. <laughs> so like little things just kept happening, but there was this joy that I could not stop. And I knew that I was in the will of God. I knew I was exactly where God wanted me to be. And see, that's the place that you got to understand. Even in, I'll use another example. If God has called you back in this theater, and maybe you're used to doing something, and God shifts it up a little bit, and all of a sudden he says, nope, I want you over here. And you're like, Ugh, why can't they be there? Why ain't they there? Oh, when you start to say that, you fizzle a little bit. But when you start saying, I don't care, I don't care what's happening, God, you give me an opportunity. You planted me right there, God. I'll sizzle. I'll sizzle as long as you want. It hurts. My flesh don't like it. It don't make sense to me. But I'll sizzle, Lord. And do you understand what sizzling does? Sizzling echoes into the heavens. And all of a sudden, that essence and that incense goes up to God. And all of a sudden, God's like, oh, look at Mario. He's sizzling. Oh, yeah, let's fan it. Let's fan it a little bit more. But sometimes we want to stop in the middle of the fanning because we get a little bit uncomfortable. We start looking at everybody else. Honey, let me tell you something. Ain't nobody standing in here from our leaders all the way down to the smallest child that doesn't go through the fire and sizzles, baby. There is a cost for the anointing of God, and it'll take everything within you. And you can, like what Tasha said, you can let it burn here, baby, or you can let it burn when you go. I want it to burn now. Oh, hallelujah. He said, and he carried me out in the spirit. And the spirit is leading me somewhere. In this leading, there will be a sizzling to your flesh and through your thoughts. And it said, and he set me down. Oh, he humbled me. Oh, he loves to humble his people. Because see, when you're humbled, you don't think about it. It's nothing you can do in yourself. You know, I can't get up here and preach this message. I, I, I went home last night, and I was trying to put it together. I was crying out to God. I was seeking God, and I was like, okay. And What? That don't make sense. That's not, the day before, it was making sense. But the Lord said, no. No. Wait. Can you wait? It's in the waiting that pieces of you begin to sizzle off. See, it was in the waiting this morning when pieces of our flesh were sizzling off because God wants to add something to you, but you want to hold on to it because it's comfortable. It's something you like. Maybe it's an opportunity. Maybe there's an opportunity that you knew that you were going to get, and then all of a sudden, it didn't, you didn't get it, and you're mad, and you're upset. You know, I remember when we were talking about, when we had an assignment back in MIT class, when he was talking about, in Nefarious, a series of yeses. God wants a series of yeses. See, the devil's series of yeses is when you fizzle. But God's series of yeses is when you sizzle. When you're willing to sizzle. When you're willing to burn. When you're willing to let it go. Amen? And he set me down and he humbled me. Nothing that God called you to do will be able to be done with your own ability. And then all of a sudden, he said, I sit you down in the midst, the very center, the core, where you can't miss anything. Whew. Everywhere I look, I see it all. And he says, all right, uh, you're surrounded by what 
is about what he's about to show you. You can't miss it. You can't say you didn't know it was there. You don't have an excuse. I'm asking you right now, what things has God been showing you? You're sitting in the midst of the valley. And God is showing you things. God's speaking to you things. And you make justifications for it. You make excuses to continue to do it. And even when you're doing it, you feel bad. But you don't feel bad enough to sizzle. You want to fizzle it out. But God says, I want to shake it. I want to shake it in my people. And he says, then uh, in the midst, round about. When you're round about, you're not, there's not chaos. You're going one direction in a circle. Everywhere you look, you will see all these bones. Around nothing else to have your attention on. Just today, where has your attention been diverted? Was your attention diverted during power-ups? It's just power-ups. Just a couple songs, kids sing. When I was standing over here, I felt the joy in the presence of God. Every little bit, every drop of anointing. I'm saying I need it. I need it. I know what I'm facing on a daily basis. I don't want to miss it. When you go into Sunday school, maybe you're a little tired. Maybe you're a little distracted because what you got to do today. Did you miss what God wanted to fill you with? Did you get a little bit more oil in the lamp? Because see, we forget we're the bridegroom or the bride. And he wants that light shining through us. But you don't get a light without the oil. Amen? And then it says, there were very many. You look and you see the greater abominations. And sometimes you can get a little frustrated. How much longer do we got to go through Ezekiel 8? I've said it. I've been in this thing for 2019. (laughs) Woo, Karen, you got a lot of flesh. (laughs) But there's always going to be something because of this and this. We're always going to battle it. You're always going to be pushing it out, pushing it out, casting it down, casting it down. But then there are days where I'm just tired, man. I don't want to do it today. I just want to rest. I want my rest. I'm telling you, JJ, man, his, his Sunday school was amazing. I'll let it be. He said, you'll see greater abominations. You see these things. Sometimes you see them on a daily basis, but you turn a blind eye. You walk away. You make excuses, justifications, hidden baggage, didn't want nobody to see it. You don't want nobody else to see them. See, this is the thing. We all have baggage. We all have things in our life that we don't want nobody to see. But God already knows it's there. Do you not remember whenever Saul was made king and he kept the baggage? He never dealt with anything. And what happened to him? The kingdom of God was stripped from him. Do you want that to happen to you? There are things in my life that I have fought for, that I have bled and died for in my, in myself. I don't want nobody to take that away from me. That was precious. That was between me and God. He added to me. He changed me. And I don't want some little justification stealing it out of my land. I want to keep this land secured. I want to keep this land locked down from the enemy and from any other excuses. And he said, and took me to the open valley. And a valley is like a low land. You can't see what's around and what's up. And it says, God's ways are higher. We can't stay down to keep away from his presence. And it's also where a river has drained and dried up. It's scourged. It's washed out. You don't have permeate, uh, per- permeal soil to plant the seed in. So we, we've been staying in valleys sometimes. You think about this land that we occupy. There's valleys in this land. Oh, there's mountains. There's things you've overcome. There's things that you have succeeded in. But then there's also valleys that you don't want to look at. You've kind of hit them off to the side. You've put things up around them. you kind of rigged around it. I don't want nobody to see it. That's not who I am. Well, maybe it's not who you are, but you've got to get it out of your land. Amen? And it says also there's no water source where the climate and the atmosphere is dry. Who's the prince of the air? See, that atmosphere that you stay in when you're in your valley, that's drying up the bones. Amen? We are to be a well-watered garden. Sometimes when you have poor soil, there's no planting that God can do in us. So when God comes to sizzle you just a little bit, because he has this little seed that if he can just get it in there, he can water it. Water. And it takes time. 
Sometimes it takes time for things to grow, like trees or fruit trees. It takes a little bit of time if you could just get that seed in there. But sometimes we got it so blocked off, you can't even get a mustard seed in there. And I want you in this moment, think about what your valley holds. Amen? Hallelujah. And this is another thing that I thought was pretty cool with the valley. A lot of times when a valley forms, they form in a U or a V. Definitely not an X. And it's, it's plain and it's in sight. Others can see this, but you yourself turned a blind eye to it. See, you think you're hiding. You think you know what's going on. And you think you're good at it. But everybody sees. But at the end of the day, God sees. God sees that thing that you're hiding. And see, we cannot move forward into the promised land until we start to see the dry bones. I'm going to, I got to go on. Very dry. You have to get pretty close to see the inside of a bone to see it's dry. So we're digging and we're digging and we're pulling down and we're moving. Oh, oh boy. That thing's just got dust everywhere. And then we start to get scared and we're embarrassed. Didn't know that was there. Gosh, Lord, I'm sorry. Okay, hold on. What part of your temple is dry and dusty? Lots of flesh, elements of things that God abhors. If God abhors something, why is it in your land? See, there's nothing that, there may be things in our land we don't know about, but there's also things in our land we do. And we have said no for many, many years. And maybe it is painful. Maybe it is embarrassing. This is between you and God. Your father that loved you so much that he gave his only begotten son, that he shed his blessed blood upon that cross, and he took that crown of thorns, and they pierced him in the side. That's the great love that he has for you. He don't care what it is if you'll just give it up. That is love. God is love. We've got to quit looking at him as he's some kind of dictator and then he's going to tear us down and then he's going to expose us to everybody. God only does what's necessary to get your attention. And sometimes we get a little stubborn. That's how our flesh is. All of our nature of flesh is stubborn. Amen. And it says, <clears throat> how did these bones get dry? And here's a few things. Disobedience, rebellion, neglectful. The wrong kind of diet, nutrition, arrogancy and pride, and triggers. You will not move any further if you continue to keep your triggers. Because it's just like Saul that carried the baggage. Those triggers, when the enemy's watching you, and you think about it, when you decide not to sizzle, and you decide to fizzle out like it didn't even matter, then all of a sudden the enemy's got his eye on you. See, whenever you're sizzling, and there's a smell of smoke that rises up of obedience to God. And God looks down and he's like, oh, I'm moving. I'm moving for you. I got you. But then, on the other hand, when you're over here you're sizzling or fizzling and you're going out and you don't want to fight. And you turn to the weak and beggarly elements of the world. It gets the devil's attention. Oh, hmm, that's really not a son of God. Hey, come on over here. You know that's hard. That, that's just too much. That road's too hard. I can do this better. At least I can have this opportunity over here. All of a sudden, your series of yeses take you right off your path. You said yes to the enemy, and you said no to God. See, you don't want to hear that. You don't want to hear that you said no to God. But when you say yes to the enemy, you say no to God. To the one that saved you, delivered you, and set you free. Remember that every time you say yes to your flesh, every time you say yes to your weaknesses and to your triggers. Amen? Hallelujah. And when bones get dry, this is what physically and spiritually happens. When the air gets to an exposed bone that's been cracked, the pain of that is outrageous. And you've opened it up and you have exposed it. And all of a sudden, you just want to close it back up and, feel that, and never want to feel that pain again. Right? Okay. But you can't close the bone without a sinew. 
And I remember my chief apostle just preaching on the Valley of Dry Bones. And he, what did he say a sinew was? It's the tough, fibrous, uh, hold on, I won't say it right. Where's my sinew? It's the sinew is what brings bone to bone and bone to muscle. So you cannot get the structure. You cannot get the image and the nature of Jesus Christ when you don't have the Holy Ghost, when you don't operate in the Holy Ghost. And he wants to start bringing that together. And I want another thing about dry bones is inside of the bone is marrow. And marrow is what gives nutrients in life. But see, if it's exposed, what the blood that pumps from the heart that goes into the blood cannot get through to it. So therefore, there will be no life, and eventually it will die off. And another thing that the blood holds is DNA. And it all of a sudden stops the DNA from transforming you into the image and nature of Christ. But we want to keep our dry bones. We just want to blow them away. They're just dusty anyway. Don't make no difference. I'll just go over here to where I got a well-watered land. But do you realize that will dry up if you keep this over here? Eventually, it's going to seep in. See, it's a whole temple, whole body. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And then he said, I will put my fl- Make sure I will lay sinews upon you. Flesh upon you. Jesus was the word made flesh. By his word and his spirit, he will willingly put you back together, closing up the broken bones and bringing them back to life. That's what God wants to do today. He wants the bones exposed. He wants the dust blown away. The dust is what the enemy feeds upon. And so many times, that's what our appetite is. We want to feed upon the dry bones. But we don't want the life-giving substance of the blood of Jesus. That's what gives us life. Hallelujah. And it says he put breath in you when God's breath blows. Even in the beginning of creation. God spoke and it was created. See, he spoke it, but you have to have breath to speak. And so many times we don't speak over our things. We don't speak over the dry bones. We just walk away from them. God wants you to speak. If there was something right now that was hanging on your leg and it was something that caused you pain, it was something that kept you from doing the things you wanted to do, what would you do about it? You would go find a way to get it fixed. But how many times spiritually do we speak to that thing inside of us? I speak in the name of Jesus. What did he say? He said prophesy and sing as the Lord commanded. And all of a sudden what happened when he prophesied? Oh, there was a noise. Oh, I'm hearing some shaking going on in here. There's a noise that's taking place. This is what God is doing in his people. You own. God don't want you to leave this place anymore with dry bones. He don't want you to leave this place with your triggers. We got too much to do. Do you realize if we were to walk into the promised land right now, the devil would come around and he'd be like, you'd be down because you're feeble and you're weak and you forgot the God that once saved you. You forgot the God that delivered you. Quit forgetting who God is in your life. You need to remember Remember, make a memorial. Only the breath of God and his word and his spirit is their healing and life. And in that noise, when the flesh is sizzling, it's like a a hissing. And I, I remember the scripture that talked about the hissing. It will come from the ends of the earth. See, maybe some of these bones are way down in the bottom of your earth. You ain't dealt with them in 30 years. The situation happened to you. You covered it up and never went back again. Oh, but there's a hissing. Every time the sizzle happens, there's a hissing going on. And he hears that hissing. How much do you want it today? Hallelujah. And all of a sudden, there was life coming from death. No bones come together without shaking. There's got to be a shaking all through the word. When it talks about the bones, there's a shaking. You let him shake you to the core. Because remember, you're sitting in the midst of the valley of dry bones. Not just one. Oh, this is a process. Not just one. There's a mist all around me. Everywhere I look, that's all I see is dry bones. I see dust flying up. And I hate where I'm at. I hate that I'm seeing this. It's breaking my heart that it separates me from God. And I know God has spoken to me about it. I don't want to do it. I've not wanted to do it for 30 years. There's things inside of me. And maybe to you they might not be bad. But they separate me from God. Because sometimes I just don't 
don't want to deal with it. You know, it's not that big a deal. It's not really hurting me or anybody else. I do my own thing sometimes. All right. God wants a little shaking going on in here. Thank you, Jesus. And all of a sudden, he said, prophesy to the wind. And only God's voice, only the windmaster's voice can blow throughout your temple. And he said, and he said bring, bring them from the four winds of the earth. Healing is coming from the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. In you, you are that new creation that God is building up. Everything from Genesis to Revelations is about you. How special are you? How special of you that he thinks about you every day. That he waits for you to come and to lift your hands and just thank him for the God that he is in your life. You thank him for the little things. I remember one time, it was my birthday this year on, in July. And there was some things going on. And I heard the Lord that morning speak to me. And he said, I want you all day long to write down every blessing that I bless you with today. I'm not talking about physical things. I'm telling you, my papers were full because it opened my eyes to understand that he's with me every moment of every day of every hour. He never leaves me. And there were moments maybe throughout the day that I didn't know what I was going to do. There were days, there were times throughout that day that maybe my heart felt sad. And in that moment, he spoke to me and joy filled it. All day long, God spoke to me. How often do we thank God for everything that he does? You couldn't possibly thank God enough. Amen. And he said, and then he's breathing. The windmaster's coming to breathe upon. He said, breathe upon these slain that are in the land. Sometimes the things that are slain in your land are your gifts, your callings, your ministries, the fruit of the spirit that's in your life. Maybe it was so evident at one time and now it's not. God said, speak to the slain inside of your land. And when you speak, my breath is going to bring them to life. I'm going to bring them back to life. There is nothing that God can't do. So many times we put God in a box and we say it can't be done. But oh, let me here to tell you, there are so many things that God's done in my life I thought couldn't be done. He is still the miracle work in God. There is nothing that he won't do for his people. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And he says, uh, step into the next steps of your ministry. It will be so evident when you see the dust coming in the door. I don't know if you've ever seen Snoopy and Pigpen. And Pigpen walks wherever he walks in. Like there's just cloud of dust and dirt everywhere. That's kind of what we look like when we're dry bones. And you think nobody don't see it just because they don't say anything. But it's evident. And all we do is pray. I want the best for you. I want to see God blow that away. I want to see God be breath upon you. I know you're struggling. I know you're having a hard time. But you need to remember who God is. You need to remember that God is for you. Amen. Hallelujah. And I want you to jump with me over to Ezekiel 16. Ezekiel 16 and verse 1. And again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, cause Jerusalem. Ah, oh, we're coming back to the Jerusalem. And as you know, we are the new Jerusalem. He said, cause Jerusalem to know her abominations. And that's what I'm doing today. I'm speaking from me too. I know your abominations. Know what's going on in your land. And he says, thus saith the Lord God unto Jerusalem, thy birth and thy nativity in the land of Cana, thy mother and thy father were an Amorite and thy mother a Hittite. And as for thy nativity, in the day thou was born, thy navel was not cut, neither was thou washed in water to supple thee, that was not salted at all, nor swallowed at all. Now I want you to understand right here, when you were born, even in the spirit, before the spirit, nobody cared. When you're talking about the enemy, he abhors you, he hates you. From the moment you were born, he hated you. So now we're coming in here. I'm sorry, I went by paper. We went back in here, he said, your navel was not cut. Nobody washed you to supple thee. You weren't even salted, nor were you swaddled. All these things that a new person needs, you had none of these things. And I want some of you to remember where you were when God found you. And even, I will say this because most of you are members and part of Revival for Christ Club. 
When you walked in here, did God not cut the navel of your flesh? Did God not cut those things that had held on to you? Did not God not wash you with the word? Did God not wash you with the truth? Did he not supple thee? Did he not salt you? Are you not salted in this place? Living in a spiritual anointed living truth. We have truth that comes out on every side in this place. And then he said you weren't even swaddled. But up here in RFC, we're taught to swaddle this flesh and let the spirit man come alive. I thank God for that every day. And he said, and none I pity thee to do any of these things unto thee. Nobody but your creator. And he said, to have compassion upon thee, but thou was cast out where? In an open field. Kind of a valley where everybody can see you. Hmm. To the loathing of thy person in the day that thou was born. And when I passed by thee, and I saw thee polluted in thy own blood. Oh, bones are supposed to have blood in them, right? Mm -hmm. And I said unto thee, when thou wast in thy blood, live. And what does living mean? It means he breathes his breath upon you. But see, when somebody breathes their breath upon you, upon you, you've got to be close enough to feel it. See, sometimes we stay far from God, especially when we're struggling. I'm just going to stay back here. <laughs> I want nobody to know. Oh, but I feel the drawing of his presence. Oh, I'm remembering when he touched me in the midnight hour. I'm remembering when I was broken and he healed me. I'm coming, Lord. I'm coming, Lord. And this is what he's saying. I remember when you were on your own blood, yea, I said, live unto thee. And he says, I have caused thee to multiply as the bud of the field, and thou hast increased and waxing great, and they are come to excellent ornaments. And thy breasts are fashioned, and thy hair is grown, whereas thou wast naked and bare. And when I passed by thee and looked upon thee, thy time was a time of love. I remember that. I have so many stories I could say of this time of love. But whenever you are in that time, you have to be vulnerable. You have to be open. Love and intimacy are such necessary, essential elements in a relationship with God. And when you stay afar off and you can't feel the breath that gives life to your vessel, you suddenly forget where God has brought you. You suddenly forget the things that God has done for you. And he said, I'm trying to remind you. And when I passed by thee, thy was, thine was the time of love. And I spread my skirt over thee and I covered thy nakedness. Nobody else did that. But God, God covered my nakedness. God covered all those things that made me bare. He covered all those things that hid who I really was. And he said, and then, uh, and I, I swear unto thee and entered into a covenant with thee, saith the Lord. Oh, and you became mine. So I am his, and he is mine. And who shall break that covenant? Who shall break that covenant? Who shall separate me from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus? Who's going to stop that love from flowing inside of me? Nothing but the dry bones, baby. Nothing but the dry bones. Hallelujah. And then he said, and then I washed thee with water. Yea, I thoroughly washed away thy blood from thee and I anointed thee with oil. And this is something that God wants to do. I'm not going to read it because God didn't have me read it tonight. But when he talked about Jeremiah 18, when he put you on the potter's wheel, so many times we're like that. In, Je in Ezekiel 16, he said, nobody loved me. Nobody knew anything about me. Nobody cared about me. Nobody swallowed me. Nobody salted me. And he said, but I see a marred piece of clay sitting right over here. That's my clay. That's my piece. And oh, I got plans for this piece. But there's a process. There's a process going on. So all of a sudden, he's sitting here and he's going out. He said, oh, I can't go there. Anyways, he said, come down to the potter's wheel. I want you to start humbling yourself. And I want you to come sit with the potter. See, the, the clay that he picked up was marred in his hand. It was not even distinguished of what it was going to be. There was no sign. When I walked through these doors at 15 years old, there's no sign of what I would be today or what I'll be next year. 
But God saw it. God knew it, and he spoke it into existence. And he prayed over me. He gave me leaders, a five-fold ministry that would feed into me, that would kill my flesh, that would give me opportunity. And I thank God for that. Hallelujah. So all of a sudden, he's got you on the wheel, and he's moving. And all of a sudden, he's putting the water down. And we're feeling good at that moment. The water's coming. It's refreshing. He's, I'm just, oh, I didn't think about that. You're spinning again. It's kind of like the whirlwind. There's a whirling going on. Sometimes it gets your attention off everything else. Take a moment to see what's going on in the potter's wheel. Take a moment to watch what he's doing. So many times we're in a hurry. Don't be in a hurry today. God is wanting to touch his people. But you've got to be willing. You've got to be open. And you've got to be honest and real with God. See, this isn't between you and me. This isn't between you and, a, and our a prophetess or our pastor. This is between Jeff and God. This is between Ryan and God. This is your time right now. God is picking your piece of clay up. He's blown upon it. He's spitting it. He's moving things out of the way because God's got a great purpose and a plan. But we cannot move any further until we start getting these triggers out of our life. God wants to blow the breath of God upon these dry bones. Can these bones live? And he said, God, only you knowest. And he said, yeah, I do. And I say, yes. I say yes those bones are going to live those bones are going to come alive and the image and nature of my son there's going to be a stature rise up inside of you and all of a sudden and I and I have to say this apostle Jenny had preached a message that had the burr in it the burl and it was a stone that she talked about and when the stone gets close to the fire or even in the fire it's translucent so you can see everything even what's behind See, God wants you exposed to the fire tonight. And all of a sudden, God's going to reveal those things that are inside of there because that burst stone is burning. And all of a sudden, you're like, oh, my gosh, what is that? That's inside of me. God, take it. God, take it. I don't want it anymore. God, I release it today. God, I release it today. This is my day of freedom. I will be that freedom nation because when this is over and next year starts and I'm walking in the promised land, baby ain't no devil ain't no giant gonna come take me out because I'm taking him out right now see if David would not have took him out when he did what would have happened he wasn't afraid are you afraid of the exposure of your dry bones are you afraid of what God's wanting to do right now you need to pick up that slingshot the spirit of God and you need to get those stones and you need to start going to war you need to start going to war. And you don't need to stop. You don't need to stop pressing. You don't need to stop sizzling until God says it's done. And you will see it's done when the translucent stone. That's all you see is the image of Jesus. Because do you know when a bone is broken? A bone needs sunlight, the vitamin D to make it strong. But there's contaminants and pollutants inside of the blood. And the vitamin D can't even get to it to get in there and make it strong. God said, let it shine. Let it shine. That sun wants to shine upon those dry bones. And he wants to make them come alive. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, God. Lord, we give you all the praise. God, we yield to you right now, Father. God, this is between you and your people, God. Lord, I pray today, God, that there would be a mighty shaking going on into the hearts of your people today, God. Lord, I pray that there be life breathed into these dry bones. God, blow away every bit of dust, God. Lord, I pray that you would even shift the atmosphere today, God. Lord, I pray right now that we would walk right now with the confidence of knowing that what we ask for, that God, you will do according to your will. And it is your will to bring healing to this land. It is your will to remove these triggers that hold us back. Begin to cry out to God. Begin to open up your vessel. Begin to be honest and real with God. You're not here just to say that I come to Sunday service. You're not here to say, I went to Revival for Christ Club today. What did you get out of it? Are you leaving the same? Are you leaving with his image more alive in you? Or are you going to walk out just like pig pen, just letting the dust blow everywhere? 
I encourage you today. Don't let this moment pass you by. God sent his word to wake you up. He sent your word to bring healing to the land. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, there's a yielding and a willingness in your people tonight. Oh, Lord, don't pass us by. Don't pass us by. Lord, here it is. I'm sitting right here in the midst of my dry boat. And Lord, I see this one you've been talking to me about. Lord, you said if I, if I prophesy, if I speak to it, you'll heal it. Oh, Lord, you'll breathe your breath in it. It'll come alive again. I'll start to look more like Jesus. Oh, Lord, take it. Lord, you take it. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, God spoke to me about you this morning. Oh, Labaki. Only God knows the heart of his people. And in your heart, I saw what looked like straight pins used for like sewing. And they were like just deep shoved into your heart. And they were shoved so hard, they touched the core of your heart. And there's damage right here that's been done. There's Caleb. And, and God said tonight, God said he's going to take these straight pins out one by one. And God said that this straight pin, when he takes it out, you're going to feel a drop of blood. Oh, there's a drop of blood. You're going to feel it because it's coming out, and it's deep, and it's going to hurt. But God said he's pulling it out. And when he does, you're going to feel that drop of blood. And he's not going to stop there. He's going to go to the next one and to the next one. And every time that he does, God said you're his. Get over here. God said you will lay hands on him. You will lay hands on him, and there will be a healing that comes. You will lift up this man. You will lift up his hands. And God will be breath. God will be breath in him. In the name of Jesus. When I was praying this morning, I saw you lifting your hands to God. And I saw you lifting them so high. They were like stretching as far as they could stretch. And you kept stretching so much so it was bringing you out of your chair because you saw the face of God and you just wanted to touch it. And God said that he heard and that he sees that you have reached out for him. And God said, and now he's reaching out to you. God said that he, as you reach, it's like the lady with the issue of blood. God said he is going to start making you whole. Do not quit reaching. Do not quit crying out to me. Do not quit seeking my face. And every time you do, son, I will bring a greater healing because my desire is to make you whole. A wholeness in your mind, a wholeness in your heart. God said he will do this very thing. This is God's promise to you. Yes, in the name of Jesus. You've turned, you've pivoted. That's, that's the word. You've pivoted. And you're on this new path. And I heard these two words this morning. It sounds weird. But God said, that he's increasing the dopamine to the euphoria of your love for him. Oh, there is, there is, oh, it's blowing. He's blowing it right now upon your heart. There are going to be moments that you're going to testify when God takes you into the chambers of his heart and he's going to blow his breath upon the foyer, upon your tables of your heart. 
And God said, Randy, because you're one, because you're one, God said he has anointed your hands to lay upon your husband. And God said there will be an oil of healing that's going to flow out of you into him. And it will be the very healing that will dry. Spend the, it will, these dry bones will not be dry again. God said right now he's blowing his breath. Understanding and realizing when God put two people together, God wants you to hold each other up. He wants you to stand with each other, have each other's back, stand in the gap for one another. Life is hard. Sometimes pressing can be so much that we're down on the ground and we don't feel like we can get back up. But if God's given you a godly man or woman, lift them up. Lay your hands upon them. Speak life over them. Blow away all the things that the enemy comes in at them with. Father, we thank you. Lord, we praise you. Oh, Lord, to you be the glory. Hello, my name is Ryan Colley. I'm International Evangelist and Administrative Vice President of Revival for Christ Club International Ministries. We'd like to thank you so much for tuning into our program today. And if you would like to help us take revival around the world to our friends in Honduras, Mexico, Singapore, and Malaysia, this is how you can do it. First off, you can send in your checks or money orders to 1005 Southwest 4th Street, in Moore, Oklahoma, 73160. You can also call in with credit card at 405-793-1777. That's 405-793-1777. And finally, you can do it through the Cash App. That's money sign RFC ROAR. That's money sign RFC ROAR. Thanks in advance for helping us take the flame around the world. Remember, we are a ministry with a vision Build on a plan, the Word of God.